So while user equal equal, and then do you have a colon after it? And then print whatevs. So what I, I would probably, and what does this say on your, is this? It's exactly. it's exactly like this. So what is this X for? Why do you have this before the, the while loop? Oops. Okay, you, you don't need this at all. Okay. Um, just looking at the assignment. Um, if you want to do like uh, X is user, or no, X is input. Long story short, if you want to ask the user what program you want to run, um, I know Asher has done that in the past, where you type, that wasn't you? Oh, oh, you mean like within the program? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can ask what program or what what question do you want to run, and I type in one, two, three, four, and then it runs that code. So everything is inside of a bunch of if statements. You don't need to do that. Um, you can. It's it'll help shape your head for functions if we get to that this semester. But you don't need to. You can just have. You can just have it like that. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you said, so it's, uh, this is the top of your screen. Yeah, the one above that. This one? No, the program above it. Oh, the shell, yeah. Is that how you wanted uh, it to run? I want everything written in here. So, no, but, so, I thought you said to have the while loop, like, stop and end once the user types like, uh, an odd number. Yeah. So that's, is that what you did up there? That's what I did here in both of these loops. All right. I guess I just did This was it. just an example. Because the same thing, will it, like, is that empty? If, well, what does your code look like? Um, I can show you. No, I'm looking at, I'm pulling it up right now. While that's loading, do you guys, anyone else have any questions? So from now on, you wanted to use it like that? Because I did it a different way where I had a, an if inside of a while. It was very confusing and it took me a long time to get there. Should if inside like, of a while? You can no, do it. No, uh, an if inside of a while. And it was, it was a much longer way to do it than you did it up there. If it, currently, if it works, that's fine. But in the next week or so, I want let's try to knock it down to get a little bit more concise. Uh, show me the document. So, which number are you talking about, oh, Asher? I did all of them. That looks fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what you did is instead of asking them up here, you just did this as two. Right? Yeah. Yeah, which is fine. Because as long as it looped, I didn't care if you asked the user for the number first or if you just assumed it was wrong and then started asking them. I don't care. Um Okay, so now we gotta go over <clears throat> break. So we've gone over break and we're gonna learn continue. Which what do you think continue does? Yeah. As opposed to breaking out of it. So <clears throat> I'm gonna write this. Gosh, I can't get rid of this. <clears throat> Everybody think I'm good. Get rid or not um, the code from the book on page. I'm not sure what page, um, but it's on in the actual book book um, 41, and it's right after. If you just if you're online and you have the and you're on the website, if you just search for continue statements, uh, it's the section in continue statements. So again, I typically don't use while true that often. Um, I like having a 
variable that's easy to <clears throat> change in the code, but if you have break and continue, um, you, it's it's fine to use while true. So first, we're going to do name is input. Who are you? Anyone know that song? Okay, good. Who sings it? The who? No? Is that a band? It is the band. It's also the WHO. Okay, so here we go. This program is going to ask the user for their name and get a password, and if both are correct, it's going to grant access. However, if they don't type in the correct name, it immediately asks them again. It doesn't continue with the rest of the loop. Because normally, we'd have something wild name doesn't equal true. Like, it'll, we continue the whole loop and start over. This stops and starts over. It, it's like, nope, we're not even touching the rest of the code. So while name or name is true, if name doesn't equal Joe, Continue. So this means if I don't type in the word Joe, it's going to start back up here. It's going to ignore the rest of the loop, and it's going to jump back up here. Does that make sense? This is probably, you know, you use continue and break with while true a lot. When you have while x doesn't equal to or something like that, you tend not to use it as much. Um, so if name doesn't equal Joe, continue. Um, then we're going to go password is input. Please enter password. And just for funsies, print. Welcome, Joe. Does this make sense to everyone? Guys online, you good? Okay. You're not online, Kevin. You're online? Huh. Yeah, starting Monday, no one will be. Were you not here for my what's going to happen Monday? No. Oh, starting Monday, you'll, you guys won't have Wi Fi. Cole, you were you were saying something? Yeah, is this supposed to be a comma there, or is that just a glitch on my screen on your thing? Comma where? Oh, right. Oh, what was that? What is that? Oh, that's your cursor. Oh my, I'm. Stupid. Yeah, that's the blinky thingy. Jeez, I'm stupid. I'm sorry. No, you're good, dude. You're good. Okay, so once we do that, if password equal equal swordfish break and then we print <clears throat> you guys don't need to type in these comments but So, do you guys all have this? More or less. So when I run this, who are you? My name is Jay. What? My name is Joseph. Joseph. My name is Zach. My name is Jimmy. My name is Jones. Hmm. None of this is working. Because as soon as I as soon as right, I type in my name. If my name does not equal Joe start over not necessarily it's not finishing the loop it jumps back to the beginning from wherever it is so it will continue until I type in the word Joe even with the lowercase I still have to type it in with an uppercase then welcome Joe boom now I'm here please enter the password if I enter anything besides swordfish 
it starts over. Make sense? Now, if I do a print statement here, print, this will only happen So this line, you will only see this if I type in the word Joe followed by the wrong password. Because currently, if I type in the wrong password, ASDF, which is a super secure password, by the way, um, sarcasm, it starts my loop all the way over. Now, but now when I run this, if I type in Joe, ASDF, this will only happen if user types Joe in the password, in the wrong password. And the reason I'm showing you this is because just because you have the words break and continue in your code doesn't necessarily mean they'll happen. Right? I have break here, but that's only if I type in the word swordfish. Otherwise, my loop's going to continue forever. The only way I get out of this loop is if I get the password correct. And the password is swordfish. And the only way to even type in the password correctly is if I get the name correct. Does that make sense? I hope so. I say that a lot. Does this make sense? Um, so when I run it, I am Joe, and when I type in swordfish, access granted. Notice, this line did not happen. I could even go print. Look here. And I'm going to type the same thing. Not one of you noticed that. Not one of you threw a correction. That's minus one point for participation. I don't make mistakes. They're always mistakes purposely for you to find. And if you guys don't catch them in time, that's just on you. So. There you go, Bob Ross. Yeah, failure. You only learn two ways from mistakes and mentors. So, looky here, this line, no matter what, will never ever happen. You will never ever see looky here. Because there's a break before it. It Once you get the word break, nothing else in the loop that is after it will happen. This didn't happen, this didn't happen, nothing. I could have another a thousand lines of code underneath this as long as it's within the while loop and if it gets to here it won't work I literally I could have code 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 for a thousand lines but it's all useless if break is before it same with continue I could have hashtag code I could have code here code here and all of this is useless because of continue what these words do is they jump out to so break jumps out of the loop at that immediate at that point and when i say jumps out that means it will uh this is why indentation is so important in python uh i'm trying to get all this on one screen this all right here is inside of the while loop because it is indented once underneath the while statement. This print access granted is even, right? Notice on the left side, it's even the same indent, same number of indentations, which currently is zero. So that it, this is outside of the while loop. So both, so break will jump out of the while loop to here and continue no matter where it is in the code will jump up to here. So continue just jumps to this indent, break jumps to this indent. Andre. Uh, by going back up in the code, like when you put if the name, why is there an exclamation? Because that means does not equal. Okay. So does continue kind of just like break out and then restart? Um, it doesn't restart. It just jumps up here and continues from there. So the reason I say it doesn't restart 
is because let's do something count plus equal one you guys will learn that very soon so you guys can ignore this for right now count is zero um, actually no let's do this ah. So that is one, two, three, four times I've I've done this. So that means it doesn't start over. It doesn't restart because if it were to restart, like well, not necessarily, but it just it jumps back up here. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't Right. Okay. So we can get rid of that. Again, I hope you guys didn't type that. Do you guys have questions on this? The biggest, yes. So you would only use from point if you want to go back to the beginning of the loop, right? Yep. So if you only wanted to say from the second if statement, go back to the first if statement, you wouldn't ever use them. So if you want to go from here to here? Yeah can't. There's no like go to line. You'd have to write a function and then call the function and have it. So, yeah. You guys online, you guys got any questions? Okay. And I don't know if I should look at the screen so I can see your responses or if I should look at the camera so it looks like I'm looking at you. I don't know. Okay. So, if you guys are good on that, one little hack, not hack, but, um, what you can do is, if you're feeling shaky, oh, sorry, yeah. Um, so, the thing that can be used in other, as, uh, other than black and black is death. You can use it in for loops too, we just haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Um, so, if you're iffy on while loops, you can write it as an if statement. I think if statements are a little easier for people to like conceptually understand. Then what you do, so you just type if, so x is 1, x, if x divided by 2, so that means if it's even, so if it's even, print even, I said odd number. Okay, that, I needed an odd number, awesome. Actually, so let's change x to 2. Okay, I have it working, right? I have an if statement that evaluates whether or not something's odd or even. So now what I would do is if I change this to a while, obviously if I run this, I'm going to get a never ending. Never ending loop. Then you just go, okay, I got it to work. Now I just gotta go x is, you know, plus equal one or whatever. So you can write it as an if statement if it makes more sense to you, and then just change the if to a while and you have a loop. Wait, what is the plus equal mean? Adds one to it. That's a much better way to put it. It just continually adds one to x. So if x starts at 0 and I add 1 to it, what does x equal? And then if I add 1 more to x, what does it equal? Then if I add 1 more to x, what does it equal? That's how you keep, that's what's called a running total. And that's how that works with code. And we're going to go that, over that with for loops right now. Once we get a little bit more into for loops. Yes, Luke. So percent sign takes the number, x, whatever it is and evaluates, is it divisible? When you divide it by two, what's the remainder? So this is called remainder division. So what is seven divided by three with remainders? Two with remainder one. So the answer to this, Uh, so 7% sine 3 gives us 1. 7% sine 4 gives us 3. 
So it's just whatever the remainder is when you divide this number by that number, which is the easiest way to figure out if a number is odd or even short of pulling in. Um, I have a beard hair in my mouth. What? Yeah, that was recorded. So. It's almost like he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Um, okay, so we are done with while loops for now. Uh, I am going to save that. And not really break time. So, did I get everything that I needed to do with this? Okay. So the next, oh, I'm going to stop this video because uh, this is all about four loops and then I'll start the next one.